Hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. I hope you enjoy the video. In this video we are going to take a look on the different aspects of designing and detailing foundations in Autodesk Robot and to do that I'm going to continue a previous project which was a two-dimensional frame and the link for that previous project is above. You should check that before we continue here. To remind you, we had a frame that had a 9 meter bay and a 4 meter story height on two pins with the loads that we have assumed last time, which is 48 kilonewtons per meter on the beam and 18 kilonewtons per meter in the live load. So, first of all, I'm just going to make me here a pin and roller. So, I just call this a roller. I define here quickly a roller and say, well, let's make this support be a roller. So, I just select that and apply. So now I have a roller. If you run the analysis, you would get a simply supported beam action and everything seems to be fine. Now the design of beams and columns was covered before. Today I'm going to cover the design of foundation. So I basically click on any foundation I want. For example, I want this foundation now. I want to design this. So to design foundation, you can click on any support you want and ask robot to design it for you. And if you want to design a combined footing, you can select two points and ask robot to design them both. If you select two points, then Autodesk robot might define for you a combined footing. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to design me a spread footing because I want to have a simple video and I will talk about the future uh, advanced stuff in other videos. So I'll just select this pin here, go to design, provide reinforcement. And if you click on that, it will start importing the foundation for you. I'll just accept that. So it imports the live loads. Now, there is nothing here because it's not selected. So you click on level, click on double click on the foundation, and now you can see the foundation. The nice thing about this is if you go back to your structure, a robot replaces the, the pin with the actual foundation. This is really amazing and really, really nice and important. Because in the future, when we design our buildings, which is a long building with a lot of columns, you will have to make sure that the foundations do not conflict with each other. There is no overlap. And you can easily do this after designing your foundations by getting back to the structure and visually checking and inspecting and making sure that there are no conflicts between the various foundations that you are designing. So back to our point, we are in foundation design now. And the first pane you see here is basically the definition of your foundation. Now you can choose different shapes of your foundation, like a sloped one. You can even choose a combined one. But for me now, I will just choose me a normal one. For the pier, which is basically the column above that foundation, I'm going to assume it's doweled, meaning that the uh, column is going to be connected with the foundation by splicing the steel out of the foundation to the column, which is the usual practice that is for reinforced concrete. You can also bolt the column to the foundation, but this is done when you have steel structures. In concrete, this is really rare. Plain means there is nothing, but no, we usually double our stuff. For optimization, you can ask robot to optimize anything that you want. And for example, you can allow robot to optimize without limits to force it to become a square footing, to have a fixed ratio between the sides, and a lot of other stuff that you can check. For example, uh, equal offsets means that the foundation has the same offset from each side of the column. I'll just keep it for without limits. Um, all right, so back to our general. Oh, it seems that those things have changed. So let me just quickly put it back to what it was. I think it was this. Yeah, everything is fine. Yeah, you see when I changed my type, it changed also my columns. I don't want that. So, okay, we're back to business. Fine. Now, uh, the first three commands, which is this story parameters and calculation options and steel, is something we have checked out multiple times in columns and beams. I'll just go quickly through that. For story parameters, there is nothing I want to talk about. For calculation options, well, you can say, for example, that now there is, of course, by punching shear and beam shear, and it will be checked. For concrete, I'm going to use me a concrete 4.5 for my foundation. You can change it if you want. For longitudinal reinforcement, I want my foundation to be reinforced by 560 millimeters. For transverse, I want it to be 420 millimeters and also 16 millimeters. For additional, I want it to be 420 megapascals and with 10 millimeters, for example. I just hit OK. So for the uh, reinforcement patterns, now you can choose any pattern you want. I want just to have one bar for the entire length of the foundation. Now, for the pier, 
this is how you uh, analyze uh, this is how the PI gets designed now there are a lot of uh, there is a lot of stuff that you can change I will leave it as is and I'll come back to it later if there is a problem please notice that I personally when I work in uh, on a robot I usually take the design of the column that was designed in the ground floor and extend it to be the same as the PI unless I have a good reason not to do so for double bars, I leave it as is. Shapes, I'll design my... Now, usually the foundation is designed using those hooks in my country, so I'll just leave it like that. Of course, you can choose any chair, anything you want. I'm just going to keep my hooks for good measure. All right, fantastic. Now, what about the loads? What about the loads? The loads are implemented from the design, from the analysis. You can see that the dead load was implemented and the live load was implemented because we have... Um, imported the loads from the structure fantastic if you go to the soil definition this is where you can start applying and changing your soil characteristics you can define your soils now now why is this important this is important because Autodesk robot calculates the bearing capacity of soil and there are two options to define that the option number one is that you yourself define the bearing capacity by inputting a number option two is that Autodesk robot defines the bearing capacity for you from calculating the bearing capacity using all kinds of soil mechanics equations that are available to it now you can of course change your soils below the foundation to anything you want for me the only important part I usually change here is the depth of foundation. I will just say it's 1.25 meters just for that and just hit enter and you can see that the yellow dotted line is now below the foundation. Now the foundation will be designed to meet this yellow dotted line so I'll just close that for now. The final thing here is my geotechnical options. Now I want all the checks to be done and I want my, stre my stress, my allowable bearing capacity to be point to zero megapascals of course this depends on the type of soil you have and well I'm ready to run my analysis so let's do that if I calculate now I should get some errors and I have I got some errors and this is related to the pier on the foundation I will show you the error later but before I show you the error let's take a look on the results you see it's a very small uh, foundation the reason why it's very small it's because well uh, the structure is very small this means that you don't have a lot of pressure now you can see that the foundation has updated its distances, its size, which also updated in the structure here. Everything has been updated. It's automatically connected. So to, if you go to the results and uh, basically just change that, you can see that the allowable bearing capacity based on the dimensions is 0.182 megapascals. This is less than your 0.2, so you are safe, and the design was perfect. If you go to foundation, reinforcement, of course I need to make this smaller. You can see that my little foundation is, has been designed with minimum steel because, well, you don't need much because there is not much force uh, on that foundation. Of course, you can increase the number of steel bars by basically changing the reinforcement. For example, 10 millimeters, and now if you're on the analysis, the number of steel bars change and you can see you have more steel bars because well 10 millimeters need more steel bars all right because i mean uh, the steel spacing must make sense before i actually implement that before i actually accept that and finally the thickness of the foundation is 0.25 now now i don't like that it's really small i just keep it to 0.4 for example and fix that fixed means that autodesk robot is not allowed to change this no matter what so if i apply that now i need to calculate again so yeah now i have a normal looking foundation there is one last thing which is called problems with reinforcement arrangement the problem with reinforcement arrangement is because of the uh, pier and uh, you can see that it's using 516 and 513 for the pier which is not correct but let's take a look on how we can solve those issues now first of all this is not a pier that I design. I, pier, I want to design the pier to have double bars. This is not a doubled pier. The second thing is, I usually ignore the pier in the foundation because I told you that I extend my column reinforcement down to the foundation and I never look at this. But still, I want to suggest some solutions for this. Now, the first thing I like to do is I like to hook my reinforcement in the foundation. So I'll just go to reinforcement patterns, go to shapes to my main bar, and to say well I want uh, my hooked here well I, I asked it to be hooked but it didn't use it 
because you can see that hooks are only used if necessary if the anchorage length is not enough but I want it to be used anyway so now if I run the analysis now I'm forcing it to use hooks and you can see all my bars are hooked which makes more sense to me uh, the second thing was about the, the, the pier so I'll go to my reinforcement patterns go to my pier and select a different type of pier which is this one and just say okay now this might not solve the problem yeah it doesn't because there are some more stuff happening here which are those stirrups now remember I told you the pier is actually not part of my concern in this problem but I'll just try very quickly to solve this so yeah, now it's solved. Okay, fine, fantastic. Now, once again, remember, it's not really part of my concern to design the pier in this case, but now I have no errors. Fine, fantastic. If you go to your calculation note, you can see the calculation note of the foundation. You can see all the calculations, all the design checks. You can see the beam shear and punching shear design checks. For example, this is the beam shear. This is the punching shear. Uh, you can also see the area still required and all the checks. And finally, you can see the material surveying, the density of steel is a little bit less. My, in foundation, I'm expecting like between 90 and 150. This is a lot less. The reason why it's a lot less because is because the forces are small. I'm just doing a very quick frame for that regard. So yeah, uh, you can also go to the drawings basically and check out the drawings of your foundation. You can meddle with the drawing by clicking on the drawing components and then for example, click here. You can meddle with the section. You can change whatever you want. Well, I leave this for you, and you can, of course, export this drawing to AutoCAD. So yeah, this is a quick tutorial on designing foundations in Autodesk Robot. I hope you liked it. There will be more advanced tutorials in the future. Well, if you like this video, I hope that you subscribe, comment, share, because it helps a lot. And as per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we'll catch you in the next video.